Actually, I hear joy, you hear jazz. But jazz is joy, and joy is jazz. Sometimes you can luck upon your own joy in life. You can sometimes succeed to your own failure, misery, and uh, pain, and you can fail towards your own joy and, and success in life. I went to Miami Dade Community College and then went on to Florida Atlanta University. And in my second semester, I flunked out. Um, statistics was my challenge. I saw an ad in the paper that said, Ringling Brother Circus looking for workers. And believe it or not, I ran away from home and I joined the circus. <laughs> I jumped off the high wire into a glass of Lipton tea. Always get my brands mixed up. It was Red Rose tea. Now seriously, the, the circus was hiring college students as an experiment. It was a complete failure. Um, they started off at 14, and one month they were down to seven. And when I left in four months, they were down to two. After the circus left Canada and went to Boston, I fell in love with Boston and out of love with the circus. It was in Boston that I discovered art films. I saw The Harder They Come, The King of Hearts. And these films were like no other films I had ever experienced because it just had uh, character development, storytelling at its best, and just some of the best epiphanies. Uh, it was just beyond what I was familiar with in the regular commercial and domestic uh, films. Well, from there, I eventually moved on to Atlanta, Georgia. And in Atlanta, Georgia, I ran into a guy that I met in Boston. His name was Phil Morris, and he's a bass player that played with the Freddie Cole Band and co-wrote a um, tribute song to Nat King Cole that was televised. So Phil said, hey, Keith, what are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? So he says, are you looking for a roommate? And I said, I don't know why. He says, I have a buddy in Boston who wants to move to Atlanta. I called this guy up on the phone and I said, what are your three favorite films? He said, The King of Hearts, Harold and Maul, and A Thousand Clowns. I said, all right, we can be roommates. So this guy, Keith Williams, moved to Atlanta, and we were renting an apartment. So we decided to um, rent a house. So we invited 150 people to a housewarming party, and 300 people showed up. We had Japanese cultural players, Brazilian martial artists, blues band, jazz band, folk band, uh, icebreaker games. It was just like a United Nations of humanity. It was paradise. It was heaven on earth. So uh, the first yard party was in June. Uh, actually, it wasn't called the yard party. It was just a housewarming party. And in July, people called us up and said, when are you having another one? So we had one in August. The following year, we wound up having four. So I did this for uh, up until 1998. Uh, then I moved to Miami. And believe it or not, I went back to Atlanta doing yard parties once a year till I finally said to myself, stop it. You don't live here? Leave it alone. So when I stopped doing the yard parties in 2005, I started a jazz series in downtown Miami. So I went, looked in the paper again, and I saw an ad that Leonard Pitts Jr. was going to be a keynote speaker at an event on fatherhood at the University of Miami. And on this panel with uh, Mr. Pitts was, were these youth, empowered youth, and these were kids that talked very uh, matter-of-factly and frankly about the dysfunctional environment that they grew up in, but no malice. And I was so touched by them, and I said, it's actually something cried inside me and says, I have got to do something for these kids. I don't know what, but I have to. So later, eventually, I realized that I can have them hold some of my jazz and my film series. Has anyone in here ever seen the movie um, Babette's Feast? Okay, right. Well, they hosted Babette's Feast. Now, here's Babette's Feast. It's like, it's a Danish film with like 90% of the cast are in their 70s. So here we are in power youth kids from like 13 to 17 and some 
who were alumni were a little older. But, you know, you've got these Latinos, black and white kids from uh, at this age watching this film with English subtitles. And later on in this film, this epiphany occurs. And the kids got the epiphany by the sounds that they were making. There's a scene where after Babbitt had uh, made a 10-course meal, the next day the sisters who hosted the uh, event thought that she was leaving because she had won a lottery for like thousands of dollars from Paris. So they said to Babbitt, well, I guess we won't be seeing you anymore. And she said, why is that? And she said, well, you won all this money. She says, no, I spent all the money on the meal. And they said to her, you foolish child, you silly girl. She says, no, you don't understand. I'm an artist. And when you are an artist, you give all of yourself to your art. And these kids went, wow, I got it. I see it. It never occurred to me that these kids were planning on their own gourmet food truck. And uh, another event I had them host was jazz event. So the Intercontinental Hotel asked me to run a jazz series for six months, and they wanted it to start immediately. My regulars were out of town, and someone said, contact Conrad. So Conrad played for me at Intercontinental, and my jaw dropped. I thought he was the most soulful jazz piano player I ever heard live. A young kid from Australia. Anyway, so back to the event that they're hosting. Conrad plays uh, at the event, but I said to them, I want you guys to put a question to each other. I want to empower you to ask the trio questions and vice versa. And so Conrad, uh, being an individual, he says to the group, I disagree with Keith. Keith said that we have arrived. He says, but... We have more in common than what you think. The draft of the draft that you go through in designing your t-shirts until you get it just the way you want it, we in jazz have to practice. And it's difficult, but it's so rewarding and it hooks you. He says, now we face with another challenge is how you take your creativity and market it so you can make a living. So we're both faced with the same problem. And these kids felt like, wow, somebody on this caliber level is saying that we, we are on the same level, and, and it meant so much to them. So uh, eventually, uh, Empower Youth um, started their own food truck. And uh, last year, uh, to put it in perspective, Conrad played for them September of last year at the Avenue D. And Conrad had an album out, and he had such a presence of mind to say to them, you are an inspiration to me. When you sew your t-shirts, I knew I had to come up with a commodity. So now you inspired me to come up with this album. And I look forward to coming back to Miami because I hear you guys are going to be having a food truck coming soon. This is September of last year. And I love to play for your food truck. Well, the good news, ladies and gentlemen, Empower Youth, uh, as of two months ago, have their own uh, food truck. Uh, and every... Uh, day at dinner time, you can go on Southeast First Street on the east side of Biscayne across from the Bayfront Metro Mover and you can enjoy a delectable meal with them. And the other part that's so amazing is that yesterday Conrad Piskuski, who now lives in New York, uh, played for the Empower Youth uh, food truck uh, with his trio and then after that he went on to Le Chet Noir across the street from Macy's and, and played another gig. Um, what's so amazing to me about this whole thing is something as simple as me finding my own joy, being willing to share it, and then discovering other people have their own joys, and in the oddest way, these different joys come together, and there's like magic. So just be in tune. There's going to be a fourth meeting of Conrad and, and um, Empower Youth. And my question to you is, what joy can you find? What joy can you fail and fall into? It's not all based on success. It's based on the joy. And nobody needs to tell you what joy is. One thing that's remarkable about Mandela is that he had a, enough time in prison to process things. But when he came out, he fought against white domination and black domination. He wanted everybody 
to be able to uh, bathe in the limelight and, 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 and as equals and as brothers and sisters. So um, the film series that I do, I have 50% of dark-skinned people in autonomous in uh, starring roles and 50% of females in empowerment roles so that we all can fall in love with humanity and see each other as first-class citizens. So my question to you, you once again is, what joy will you share and how will you use it to make humanity fall in love?